Concert Hall, and um, she's going to sing a song, and indeed accompanied by her pal here, uh, Emer. This is Jesse Kennedy and Emer Reedy, and of course they're um, very, very talented musicians and great friends of Susie. And uh, Jesse, um, her next job I think is the Opera House in Cork. If any of you want to go to it in June, and Emer is on a cello tour all over Ireland soon. So a little bit of a treat for you before we uh, begin the speeches, okay? And then we'll have the illustrious um, Brian McGuire talking about uh, Susie's art, okay? Thank you. 
Mine's been a bit of the cool and at the end there, uh, uh, at the end of the show. And may I now introduce you to uh, somebody who, by the way, was last week measured in a list of the ten of the ten best artists at the Cologne Art Fair. Number two, Mr. Brian McGuire of the ten best artists. <laughs> I come back. <laughs> because embarrassment. This lady. I'm an embarrassment. She's a Miss Embarrassment. A Miss Embarrassment. I like that. Okay. Um, it's Susie's right. Um, these are paintings. Um, the, the, the difficult thing is, it, 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 I mean, it's difficult in any art form, but how do you paint the country? Robert, really. Royalty. We're uh, asking for you to be closer, fine. <laughs> they, they might if they hear me. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a critical edge to this work. Uh, the one thing that's free in the work of the animals. Um, I think what she's doing is she's bringing together I mean, our, our heritage, which is like iconic passive women. Uh, they're, in the drawing, there's nothing passive. It reminds me of Jim Dine's work, if any of you know it, uh, very beautifully in her work. Uh, however, this iconic <coughs> woman is linked to our own local royalty, uh, namely Mun Mr. Hai. Um, if she, she's not far off the mark. He wouldn't disagree with this. Because I remember clearly when Eddie Maguire was commissioned by Charlie to paint him, uh, the, the, the work was shown in the Taylor Gallery when it used to be in Dawson Street. Uh, and there he was, on top of his horse in a bowler hat. <coughs> the squire. Now that was what he got for himself, how he would be shown. He's given a little more lyricism here. He's presented as the prince, um, the prince of Hamlet. Uh, he's in modern dress here. Or sorry, he was in modern dress in the, in the Taylor Gallery. Here, his uh, Shakespeare plays a role in how he's presented. So it's not all fact, it's fiction. Um, he's observed by the animals. The birds, the horses, the dog. The dog is ferocious. He's over here. And the bird whispers in his ear. He says, they're coming for you. As well, they might. <laughs> what, what is this? It's the painting of the pre-republic. The, the people aren't in these pictures. There's the iconic Ireland, this woman, passive, and there's the royalty, but there's no people. So it's not that far off the mark, because only a couple of days ago in, in the GTO, um, there was a, an artist opening where performance artists, the best in Ireland, uh, did a performance relating to the women who, 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 who ran the messages in Dublin in 1916. It was very beautifully done, etc. But outside, underneath the pillars, when you came out from that show, there was a soup kitchen for the homeless. In a republic, everybody is terrible. In a, in a, a, a robber barn world, nobody is it, I don't find this extraordinary. I, I know Susie works in France, she works in America, and she works here. So she does work in republics, and it, it comes true. Um, I think.
think we need the viewpoint. It's absolutely free. It, 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 it's not mediated by any vested interest. It's one woman's view of all this business. And it's miraculous that it's going through painting. I think it is. It's so difficult. Um, the painting, I, I, I'm trying to find language to, to, to understand how good the painting is. And the, the only thing I could come up with, um, and it, you can see it for a start. There's no need to, for me to say anything. But for me, painting these pictures is like meeting somebody who's really well. When you meet somebody who's very really well, it's a good experience. You know it. It's absolutely clear. You know it. When you meet somebody who isn't very well, you also know it. <laughs> so, it, it, it. These paintings are so well done that it's the same effect. They're beautifully painted, and, and they certainly make me feel... I can, I, I can accept this critique. I don't feel miserable about it. This is what happened. And thank God somebody's written it down. Thank you. Oh, well, that is like, a great affirmation. Actually, thank you. And the artist, I'm sure, is equally pleased. Great affirmation. And now, of course, you can imagine why, indeed, did I ask Vincent Brown to open this show, actually. And, um, well, um, Vincent, uh, I know, has an opus in the making, but I'm not going to even say a word about it any further, in case he has, it's a secret. Um, and indeed, he has his artwork in the process. Um, and, of course, he and I were sort of um, enemies at one stage, I'd say, in the publishing world. <laughs> and, um, and, and it's nice to, in fact, actually invite enemies back in the door sometimes, when you have time to reflect and to see, in fact, uh, how interesting they were indeed, and uh, as foes. So, uh, may I introduce you to the great and indeed um, interesting... Mr. Vincent Brand, who was speaking about, about who knew very well, and indeed speak about now having seen um, Susie and being able to um, talk to somebody, um, I suppose, um, who has a fresh and a, a new uh, perspective on the times that were in it. Mr. Brown, thank you. I, I didn't realise I was in an enemy territory. You <laughs> <laughs> um, open books. I, I think the first time I met um, Noelle was in the Four Courts. She <laughs> sued me for libel. Uh, and I tried to get Charlie to mediate on my behalf, but he made it much worse. Uh, I think the egg are on, actually. Uh, I, I got to know Charlie uh, well towards the end of his life. And I liked him a lot, in, although I shared a lot of the critiques that I represented in the paintings here uh, of him. But there was one thing about him which I mentioned to Noel yesterday, uh, and it, this was about his charm. And in attention to reading of his charm, I always think that he never spoke well of anybody. Um, <laughs> 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 I, I'm delighted that I was invited by one of my enemies to come here, <laughs> uh, because I, I find this really so invigorating, this, uh, th this exhibition, and the, the, the painting that I like best is the one just inside the door over there, the cock, and it's of uh, this, this cock who's holding a cigar and a, bottle and a glass of whiskey, and I thought... I know, I know who that is, and, and I think, well, who is it, who is it, and several names came into my mind, and there's that, that, that arrogance, that entitlement, that, that, uh, that uh, particularly entitlement to women, and uh, but just entitlement to possessions and to wealth, that, come, that seeps through that painting, which I think is, is, um, uh, is very, uh, is very, um, is, you know, is very powerful. And the field, um, that other painting over there on the far wall, uh, of, of the a woman who's, and I, I, I'm, uh, Susie had to explain this to me, and I, I, I didn't get it. But the field um, with the woman's face blanked out, 
um, and her indifference to the field uh, as represented in the painting is really also quite powerful because she possesses this sense of possessiveness that, that, is, that envelops our culture, that of ownership, of wealth, of, of property, um, is represented in that uh, painting uh, by the woman who is distanced from her. And that too is a very powerful image of our society, of how we have this very firm notion of possessiveness, that it's my money, it's my taxation money, and it's always hard-earned, hard by the way, and that <laughs> my hard-earned money paying for bloody artists to do their self-indulgent thing, and we've got to stop it and all that. That, that captures this, that captures this uh, so well. But there's so much else uh, here that I thought um, that I thought really captures so much. And, and, and that, just to talk about Kathleen Hoonhorn, I think that that Yates thing about Kathleen Hoonhorn and, and that idea in our in our culture and our folklore about Kathleen Hoonhorn, there's something insidious about it. That the idea that if people, if men of course, could give their lives for Ireland, for freedom, that would be great. That's something noble and terrible. But freedom for what? What was all that about? And like, yeah. This occurred to me a lot during the 1916 uh, commemorations of the last while. What was freedom about? And freedom for whom? And who benefited it? For the people who, for instance, had to emigrate from Ireland in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, and 50s, <coughs> and uh, right up to today. Was that, what's freedom, what does freedom mean to them? What did freedom mean to the people in the orphanages or to the reformatory schools? The people in the sanatoria, the people in the, in the mental hospitals. The people in poverty, the people who were belittled by the huge inequalities in our society, what does that mean? What did that freedom mean? And I think that this that that carried through in some of these in some of these paintings uh, here. I think the one of Charlie and the and Kathleen Hulhan uh, over there, uh, where she, she slumbered while and while her children while her children left, and then she was seduced. Well, actually, I think she was the seducer rather than the seduced. <laughs> and, and that idea of, of, of freedom, uh, uh, that, that this Kathleen O'Hulahan mythology stuff, I think has done things to our minds that has been, that has been, um, that, that has been questionable. I think that that, that flight over here, the, 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 that horse running away, and again, as uh, Susie, Sort of explained this to me that maybe this the horse is fleeing from something, and I hope so. I hope that that horse is fleeing from the culture that we have, that 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 represented so powerfully by that cock over there and by the woman with the fields and uh, elsewhere, and and also that corset on the side, and um, which is as uh, um, Susie described it as just a piece of comedy, but I think that it's. Also, a piece of the disregard for women. The, the, the just, uh, I, I, I spoke about freedom, like freedom for women. Look at what we did to women over all those, all, all the, all the decades of Irish freedom, and what, what was it about? Anyway, back to Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> and Charlie, a lot of people go on with Charlie and his, the corruption and the money and all that. But I think that what is more really significant about Charlie was he was a carrier of the, vi of the virus of inequality, the virus that has made this a cruel and awful society. Of course he wasn't the only carrier, he was one of many carriers, but he was perhaps the most flagrant carrier of that. Not just because of his own flamboyance, about his own, his own acquisitiveness, his own recklessness or whatever, but, but uh, but as I say, he wasn't the only one, and and it's still here. We, we, the, this government that is about to come happen, uh, come into being now, Fianna, Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael together, though not formally, that will do exactly the same. Nothing will change. Nothing will happen. And that's the kind of society. And it's great to have a defiance of that represented in the paintings we're here. And Noel, I just want to thank you. Thank you very much for exposing me to this music. I'm delighted that I've, I've been oh, given fresh oh. insight into what, what's insidious about the way we go on. And thank you very much. Good speech. That's very good. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Now, um, guys, I don't need to
to tell you. I don't need to tell you. They were only round the corner from a man called F.B. was born, or named for a good bit. And actually, I can tell you, absolutely forecast, that this artist is going to be going some places, I can tell you. And whatever prices you see on any of her daubs, as somebody might have called them years ago, um, in fact, beautiful, beautiful shore drawings, whatever they are, I can tell you, would be nothing to what, in fact, at your an investment point of view, these paintings will bring as she carries on. And I don't know if she's arrived yet, but your great friend, Kira Gibbons, is she here? Because I can tell you, Kira has brought her around the world and she is so highly rated. And I mean, in the company of people like even Tracy Eamon showing alongside in the next uh, store with her in various places, this is an artist to invest in. That's my little bit of a commercial. I have to do this kind of thing to stay alive in this gallery. Um, but, um, and actually, um, now, uh, I have a little bit of a treat for you before you go around and look again at uh, uh, her paintings, Susie's paintings. And we're going to have a Coonan by, where is she? There she is, Emer. And we, we just thought this was kind of appropriate uh, to remember all of these things that all these things that you know um, we all remember somewhere in our past and what were they about but they mirrored you know um, our, our existence up to now maybe it's all going to change okay <laughs> 